Noon, good day, good morning, good evening, and good night to wherever you are in the... My name is Sylvia Litana Robinson, and I am a, a co-host as well as the president of the African Media Online Corporation. It's my pleasure with my team to come into your homes every Sunday to come and converse with you and also to share some information that is pertinent to most of our, the way we're living today. Um, happy Father's Day, by the way. Every father that is out there, may God continue to bless you. Even those mothers who are single mothers who are playing both roles as mom and dad, I say happy Father's Day to you too. I know it's not fair, they'll say you got Mother's Day and this and that, but guess what? If you're playing both roles, you are a father. In my books, I'm a father. Happy Father's Day to me. Anyway, our topic for today, uh, <clears throat> going forward is a modern day enslavement of Africans and people of African descent and the role of fathers in overcoming the challenges of enslavement. So I will let our learned host, our renowned former reporter from Cameroon, right? Nah, he's not a former, he's still, he's still a reporter. And see what he's doing now? <laughs> My brother, a some family came to come and take over the show, thank you. Good afternoon, Sylvia. Good afternoon to all of you joining us on Zoom and joining Africa Online Media Corporation. It is 8 p.m. in Pretoria, Johannesburg, South Africa, Johannesburg precisely. And uh, it was uh, a minute ago, I was able to get the time difference. So we're a long way behind them. They're already getting ready to go to bed, but we are here ready to start our broadcast, our live broadcast on Africa Media Corporation, Africa Online Media Corporation. Here we go, we're starting with the editorial, where it's a reflection kind of, both can go. June 21 or June 21st is the 173rd day in the Gregorian calendar. We have 193 days to go before 2020 is out of our way. This 173rd day of the year coincides with Father's Day in the United States in particular. We are told that Father's Day or Father's Day, that is a possessive Father's Day with the S, uh, with the apostrophe after the S, is a day of honoring fatherhood and paternal bonds, as well as the influence of fathers in society. In America, Father's Day was founded by Sonora Smart Dot and celebrated on the third Sunday of June for the first time in 1910. It is held on various days in many parts of the world all throughout the year, often in the months of March, May, or June. As we celebrate Father's Day 2020, the words of an unknown writer I have become used to quoting come back to mind. That unknown person wrote, a dad is someone who wants to catch you before you fall, but instead picks you up, brushes you off, and lets you try again. A dad is someone who wants to keep you from making mistakes, but instead lets you find your own way, even though his heart breaks in silence when you get hurt. A dad is someone who holds you when you cry, scolds you when you break the rules, shines with pride when you succeed and has faith in you even when you fail. Yes, a dad is everything to some and nothing to others, permit me say that, an interrogator but a comforter, a role model, but in some children's thinking, the incarnation of evil considered by some as the best of friends, but viewed by others as a frenemy. Friends or frenemies, fathers are reason enough to look at the future with hope and confidence. And I would hurry to add, fathers protect their very own and would not conscientiously let them off, give them up or enslave them. Modern enslavement, the key phrase in our discussion topic today is the creation of unconscionable individuals who see themselves as the alpha and omega of other people's lives. Those who enslave are people who need not just education, but constant re-education, concrete reminders that we are all children of the most high who deserve to be treated with the dignity that we deserve. As we engage in our discussion topic, let all the 
Let all be reminded that June 21st usually marks the summer solstice in the Northern Hemisphere and the winter solstice in the Southern Hemisphere. Experts tell us that this is that day of the year with the most hours of daylight in the Northern Hemisphere where we are and the fewest hours of daylight in the Southern Hemisphere where Evelyn is at the moment. Most or fewest hours of daylight or not, our world revolves on round, around its axis, bringing us the good, the bad, and the ugly. So what do we learn from history? Some good, yes. On this day on, in 1963, Cardinal Giovanni Battista Montini was chosen during a conclave of his fellow cardinals to succeed the late Pope John XXIII, he chose the name Paul VI. For those of us born in the 50s, this is where we begin to learn the Catholic history of popes. On this day in 1788, the United States Constitution went into effect after New Hampshire, New Hampshire became the ninth state to ratify it. At the time, there were only 13 states and a two thirds majority was required and is still required today for any rule or for any regulation to become law in these United States. And to circle back to our discussion topic, call it servitude, call it enslavement, call it by whatever name, slavery is an inhuman activity. While some claim that the story of slaves is as old as humanity itself, the changing times do not in fact, they should not give any other group of people the audacity to prey on other human beings and turn them into marketable goods. Slavery, human trafficking, and subjecting some into sex tools is a crime against humanity, and the international community ought to stand up resolutely against it. And we are aware of countries in parts of Africa and the Middle East that glorify this inhuman treatment of especially men and women from the African continent. Wikipedia, that free encyclopedia tells us in its entry, slavery in contemporary Africa, that the continent of Africa is one of the regions that still finds pride in enslaving its own kind. It must not be allowed to continue. The practice, whether in Africa, whether in the Middle East or whether in Asia is inhuman and inhumane. It was so then prompting Patrick Henry, that American to proclaim and I quote him, is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, almighty God, I know not what cause others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death either be a free man living free or you better die and go to your creator. Yes, it is not worth living in chains because of another human being. The birth certificate of these United States, that is the Declaration of Independence of July 4, 1776, proclaims among many other things, quote, we hold these fruits to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Swiss French man, Jean-Jacques Rousseau said, man is born free, but everywhere he is still in chains. Unfortunately, it shouldn't be so. And unfortunately, they are just words because for many, that life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, the American the Constitution refers to, the Declaration of Independence actually refers to, remain a bridge too far for many, a mere dream for almost everybody from the continent of Africa. What prompted Daniel Patrick Monaghan to, to describe as a racist virus in the American bloodstream has become reality even today in the 21st century. But what Daniel Patrick Monaghan noted after reviewing three centuries of what he called the unimaginable mistreatment of people of color, that is, especially at that time, there was only, only the black people. He said, this is a disgrace that ought to be confronted 
and that ought to be fought against by every reasonable person. Unfortunately, that is not yet so. It is so ingrained in most people from all over the world that we all need an education and a new mindset that presents and portrays every human being as equal and deserving dignity and equal treatment. Enslavement demeans the individual. Enslavement takes away, not add to what that other individual is. We must all work for the dignity, for the pride, and for the value of every one of God's children. And here I rest my case, and over to you, Sylvia. I will not call you that other name anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, my brother. Yes, um, it, <clears throat> it's such a pleasure always uh, to see you, my brother. Again, I, like I said, happy Father's Day to you and to all the men that are out there, you know, watching and even those who are not watching. So our topic for today is a very, very uh, sensitive topic to a lot of people uh, of color, not, not only us of color, but you know, we have also other races that may have suffered the same, but it appears that the people who look like me got the, the major brunt of it. Like I, I mentioned earlier on, for those of you who are um, just joining in, our topic is modern day, modern day enslavement of Africans and people of African descent and the role of fathers in overcoming the challenges of enslavement. I just uh, will jump in just with a few remarks on this one because, it, it, you know, it gets me emotional sometimes, but I, I hope today I'll, I'll be able to hold my own. You know, we all know about slavery, both in Africa and uh, overseas, all these African, uh, I mean, uh, European countries that came and uh, took our children, brothers and sisters and brought them to the Americas, to the Englands, to the Belgians and so forth. 1884-85, the Berlin Conference, the Partition of Africa, began this, this, this uh, road to hell for the Blacks. So 400 years later, this is still very prevalent. It's very, very evident. Everywhere you go, you can take a knife and slice, a hot knife and slice through butter and it will melt away. A lot of these um, racisms, the Middle East is number one for these. Secondly, United States, I think, is just at the same level. I just found out we had uh, Blacks in, Turks, in, in Turkey who also have their own villages as Blacks and they're not treated any way better than we are treated here in the US or any other part of the world. We have the CDs as well in India, same, they clamored in their own little convenient um, uh, poverty-stricken areas where they're, where they are, you know, they're kept. What has the Black man done wrong that everywhere he goes, he has to be mistreated, demeaned, deligned, and you know, just stripped off his dignity. When is this going to stop? What do we need to do to make this thing stop? Yes, the white brothers and sisters, we smile, we work together. Some of them are not racist at all, don't get me wrong. It's not every white person that's a racist, no. There are some others more than others. Even today, as we live among ourselves, we find that when you go to the Middle East, They'll promise you a job. Uh, some African countries whose names I will not mention even signed treaties with uh, some of these Middle Eastern uh, countries that they'll be sending what we call quote unquote uh, domestic slave, I mean domestic uh, help, meaning babysitter, house help, uh, driver, and so gardeners and so forth. But when they get there, guess what happens? Their passports are taken away. They are locked up in, in the compounds, what they call a compound, where they live contact with their relatives, they have to sneak out uh, text messages or messages to their people because they are working 20, uh, 21 hours in a day and th sleep three to four hours. They're beaten, they're raped, they're maltreated. When is this going to end? Now, we also have fathers who are black, fathers who are raising sons. I have three sons-in-laws. God did not bless me with a son biologically. I had four daughters, but the sons that God has given me have given me sons now whom I really worry about on a daily basis. Because when I look at my oldest 13 year old grandson, I look and I look at this world and I say, what is to become of my grandchildren? They are black. They're black like me. And knowing how blacks are treated, they're given the menial jobs. The jobs that other white people don't want to work is what they're going to work. Even when they have the diploma, the, de the PhDs, why 
is the black man enslaved still 400 years later? I thought slavery ended. It appears like it's still going on. My brothers and sisters, this to take seriously and put an end to. There's some of us who are out there who probably have an idea of how we can start mending these fences among ourselves as black folk, the Africans, the African-Americans, Afro-Americans, whichever word they prefer to be called by, but I think African-Americans is appropriate. The love needs to begin somewhere among ourselves. Yes, Sylvia. Yes, a lot needs to begin among ourselves. So take a breather there, but please don't be emotional. We are all touched by this. Reverend Pam, how is Houston today? Yes. We're having a thunderstorm. They're announcing a thunderstorm here. That's why I was checking my phone because I heard thunder and thought I should check what was going on. So Reverend Pam, how is Houston today? I know Sylvia is also in Houston, maybe. Or in no, she's not in Houston. She's two hours No, I'm in Delton. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think the, the, thund the thunderstorm came through your phone to Houston because it's actually raining and thundering here also in Houston. Okay. You know, oh, so that probably came from you. Uh, but uh, happy Father's Day once more, Nia Song. You are a great mm -hmm. father. You've been married for more than 50 years to the same woman. You have five sons and maybe a thousand grandchildren. I'm not sure. But uh, <laughs> we wish you a happy Father's Day. You are awesome. Uh, both to Cecilia and I enjoy working with you. I want to acknowledge Miss Mariama Sala. Uh, you're welcome. You're actually muted. Um, wait. She's my guest. Yeah, she's just listening in. Oh, she's just listening. Okay. You're welcome. She's calling from the Gambia. She's calling. Awesome. Awesome. No, after today, she's not a guest anymore. She's part of Africa Online. We are bringing Africans online. That's what this is. So on behalf of Africa Online Media Corporation, I want to especially welcome you, Sister Mariama, and uh, 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 Ms. Mafani, who, who is always faithful. You're welcome. I love the Afro. Looks like Reverend Solange keep having technical difficulties. She keep coming in and, and dropping. But this subject, you know, and it's a, I think it's a good subject to discuss on Father's Day. You know, um, our fathers face a kind of challenge that we, the women, and the females don't understand. Because from time immemorial, the oppressors have been threatened by the black man, whether they are on the continent or in the diaspora. That's why they tried and they still do to try to dehumanize them, to humiliate them, to degrade them, to discount them, and of course to kill them. I don't need to, I don't even want to talk about that killing today because today's Father's Day, I, I'll get emotional. But so I want to encourage all our sisters and mothers to support our brothers, our fathers, our men. Even when they are not doing their best, let's not use our mouth to put them down, to call them demeaning names. Let's support them. They, you might just be that push, that catalyst that they need to know that they are worth something because the oppressors have, have told them they are not worth anything. So we, in the, we now, as their, their women, their sisters, their mothers, cannot continue to put them down, cannot help the oppressors oppress them and suppress them. We cannot. So I want to encourage all our brothers and sisters, even if you are married to a man who is a cash potato, please don't call him a cash potato. Just keep encouraging him. Someday he will get off that couch. I'm not saying that you should go and marry a cash potato, please. That's not what I'm talking about, or a gigolo. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about lifting up these people. They just need something. They just need encouragement. They just need somebody to speak life to them somebody to believe in them, somebody to just uh, let make them feel important or valuable, and they will get out. We are not lazy people. We are very hardworking people. We are very smart people. So to all our men out there, I want to encourage you, and, and we're going to pray for you guys today at the top of the hour, that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. The reason why these people keep coming after you because they are threatened by you. They are threatened. The oppressor's biggest threat is an educated black man. So we, your sisters, even though a, 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 a more of the sisters are educated or in a position of power than the, 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 the brothers, we are here to hold your hands, to stand with you, to support you, to encourage you, to empower you, to lift you up, to bless you and not curse you. 
just know we are your greatest cheerleaders and your greatest fans and your greatest uh, support system. Don't suffer in silence and keep and die in silence. You know, confide in us and by God's grace, together we'll be able to solve whatever it is that come. And of course, with God, near some. Thank you so very much. And to, to get the conversation going, uh, I know Evelyn has been listening in. She's been in for more than 30 minutes already, waiting and watching for us to join. So Evelyn, what is your take on this topic that we are discussing today? Tell us your thoughts about enslavement. Tell us about Father's Day and tell us about what you know about how things can be righted, if at all. Um, I thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, when I reflected on the topic uh, today, uh, I tried to do some research and uh, to find out exactly what we mean by enslavement. And um, my understanding is enslavement is like around forced labor, forcing somebody to do some work, you know, and obeying your instructions. And the cause this person loses, uh, he or she will lose freedom. He saw her freedom. And um, when I think of uh, slavery, I think a lot about the, 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 the East. You know, there's a lot of slavery in the East, you know, in um, countries like India, like China, like Pakistan. But if I come to, I'm talking from African perspective to Africa, where I am right now, we also encounter some slavery, not only for those who have been taken by our brothers and sisters to Europe, but also within Africa, we have people within Africa or there are others within Africa that they are really enslaving our children. Here I'm talking about the Lebanese, I'm talking about the Chinese, and they are actually practicing you know, slavery. This, they are enslaving our kids in right in our own eyes in our continent. And um, the men are still very quiet about it. You know, they don't talk about it. The political leaders do not talk about it. And we are wondering what's happening. It's not here. It's, it's public. But the men do not talk about it. But I hear a lot of women talking about this. And um, from this topic, you know, the men are fathers, men being fathers as well. They, they, I think they also have their interests and sometimes they try to protect their ego, you know, without saying certain things. There's a lot of slavery right now in our continent, you know, which is happening and our children are victims, but the men are not talking about it. So that's all what I wanted to say, you know, to let you know that we also have slavery in Africa going on now in our eyes, not just those that have been taken to Europe by our brothers and sisters who are looking for money. But we, in our own eyes, we have a lot of slavery. And the women talk about it. A few women organizations and human rights organizations are talking about it. But the men, especially those in leadership in position of, um, of power, they do not talk about it. You know, Although we have a few countries like Kenya where they have been a bit loud, many African countries are not talking about it. They are quiet about it. Sylvia, over to you. Yes. Um... With regards to Kenya, indeed, I didn't want to mention no countries, no country names there earlier on, but um, it's it's something that um, the Kenyan government, I guess, I'm not sure if Tanzania also joined, but I know Kenya did uh, uh, agree something with I think the Middle East where where uh, <clears throat> people who need employment and would like to go to the Middle East have actually those positions and you know visas are not that hard for them to get because then they go there and get a, an employment, I mean, get a, a job, so to speak. What the Kenyan government is not realizing is no matter how many times these videos have been sent to some of these politicians, because I know personally, I did forward a, a, one of these videos to somebody that I know that knows a politician. Uh, Sylvia is frozen now, I don't know what happened, maybe the weather. Uh, all the same, uh, Reverend Palm, talking about enslavement, uh, why is it that the men seem to be the victims or the, the, the ones the finger is pointing at? Does it mean the females do not also enslave a people? Well, well th th this is the thing, you know, when you, the man is supposed to be the head of the household. When, when you take the, way the, 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 the household, the, the head of the household, the household, they are, that's their hope, you know, is that it will scatter. 
that's that's what they are hoping to 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 do. That you take away the head, you know, or uh, uh, or you smite the shepherd or the head of the household, and the sheep will be scattered. So that's why they target the man. The man is supposed to be the head of the household. What, what, what happened in the Garden of Eden? The man was not at home. That's why the serpent could come and talk to the woman. It's not that the woman don't, it's, it's just that they know that the man is the one who is in charge of the household, and that's why they come after the men. But I want to say something. This everything is not just, you know, taking away people's freedom or, 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 or not, uh, giving them work, having them work without pay. It's also having them work for little pay. A, a lot of our people, both on the continent and every say or here, go, go to an, any office back home where there's an African and then there's a European or Asian or an American. That African, it doesn't matter if they are more qualified, you know, or more competent, is going to be making way, way less than the, 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 their, their colleagues. Same here in the U.S. It has happened to me. As a matter of fact, the owner of the company told me, he said, Pam, if you were white, you'd be untouchable. He knew that the, 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 there was a guy who was not even, wouldn't know one quarter, and I'm not exaggerating of what I know, just because of the color of his skin. He was brought into the company before they figured out how smart I was, how intelligent I was, how productive I was. So they set his salary before they even figure out what I could do, and it had already been tested. They couldn't go back and uh, you know undo it. So the, the owner actually found a way to make it up to me by giving me bonuses. I said this; it happens. Even women, not just it, not just uh, uh, our black people, even women. So we have this uh, skin color thing, and then we have the gender thing also. You know, so so uh, uh, again, it, it is not just forcing people to work for no pay. When you don't pay people, they are due. The level is body of uh, if you don't pay somebody what they are worth or what they are doing, that's enslavement. It's a it's a form of enslavement. It's a it's a form of slavery. So but I want to encourage that's why we Africans need to own our own businesses. We need to support each other. We need to promote each other. We we we, we um we, sorry sister Sylvia did you fix your audio problem? Yeah, somehow it just snapped out. Yeah, I, I've changed the, the computers. I'm, I'm using a different. I'm not okay. Sure what happened. okay, no problem. Let me let me continue. You know, we, 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 we need to support each other. We have to support each other. We must support each other. I, 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 I recently I found about the Black Wall Street in uh, uh, Oklahoma. You know, in Tulsa, where the, the black people were so prosperous, the the, the the white people got jealous and went and burnt down all their businesses and killed more than 300 uh, people. So, so uh, again, uh, this is what I'm saying. They, they, they try to, to destroy the black man because they know once the black man stands up, we are going to be more stronger, more uh, economically powerful than them. So to answer your question, that's the black man is a threat. They throw them into prisons. You know, they throw them into prisons uh, in, in masses. However, they have not succeeded because the mothers now have become mothers and fathers to this to our, our children. And the black women are being more empowered. You saw what our sister in, 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 in DC did. She, she, she was the mayor of DC. She went and painted Black Lives Matters in a street that leads right to the White House. That's a sister who did that. That was not a brother. So you 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 you, you may target our brothers. Let me tell you, we African women, when I say African, I mean women of African descent. We are very strong. Uh, uh, we, 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 we can feed a whole village with a dollar. We can do the impossible with God's grace. I'm not taking a, a, a credit from God. But I'm saying that you can attack our men all you want. We, the women, are going to fill in the space. But from today, we are going to start encouraging our men. You can put them down, but we're going to encourage them. And we're going to make sure that they don't get killed. Over to you, Niasa. Thank you very much. Uh, Sylvia, now that you are back, I know you still have, uh, you are not finished your li line of thought. So go ahead and let's see uh, what else. But uh, Reverend Pam, I think there was somebody on an iPhone in case the person comes on. That, that, that's Reverend Solange. She's been having technical difficulties. She's been going in and out. I'll let you know. <laughs> All right. She, she and I, I must be on the same bandwidth. I hope things stabilize. Sylvia, over to you. Yes, thanks so much, Nisa. Yes, like I was saying earlier, let me just uh, conclude that sentence, and I just want to jump on a little bit on what Reverend Pam just said. 
there about uh, uh, the, the, the other part of enslavement. Uh, for sure, the, the, the brothers and sisters that are being sent out of, these, of our African continent to go to all these countries are being mistreated, underpaid, overused, misused, abused, raped as well. So that said, let's put that aside. Uh, Reverend Pam, I love what you said about our men. Yes, we are strong black women and we stand behind our men. No matter how many times they'll try to put them down, we will be the, the ones to hold their hands up when their hands are too tired to work because we are their helpmates. And no matter how many times the white folk or whatever other race wants to put us down, guess what? We will all, always rise up to the occasion. Look at all these inventions that have come up by the black man, but yet the, 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 masters, the masters who were masters to these uh, slaves who were brilliant as hell, they come in there, they, they steal their, 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 their inventions or whatever, and they put their name to it, and okay, it becomes so-and-so invention. But um, with the way God made us, we were the first people on earth, the black person was the first person on earth. We know it, history knows it, so no matter what denying you will do, we can never be inferior to any other race. We, we are the original, God's creation, original, made in his own perfect and correct image. So no matter how much oppression, suppression they do to us, guess what? We always rise up to the occasion. Today, we have all these killings of our, of our, of our men. They want to do a mass eradication of the black men, but guess what? We got news for you, brothers and sisters. We ain't going nowhere. We're here to stay. And stay we will until God decides to come back. So for those of us who are listening to this program, if you have a way to reach out to somebody and you know you're being enslaved, being held against your will, being mistreated, ill-treated, whichever part of the world you are, the Africa Online Corporation is open for you if you want to come on our show, talk about yourself. We don't have to show your picture or your name. But please come and share with us some of these ideas or some of the, the traumas, the things that we're going through. As for our fathers, our husbands, our brothers, uncles, grandpa, uh, grandparents, and all, today's your special day. Rise up and shine. Sister Pam said something very, very profound and said, even if you're married to a couch potato, do not call him a couch potato. Do you know that when you as a woman or rather as a wife, speak those words. They are very, very hurtful. They are more hurtful than when you hear it from the outside because that is your partner. That is your life partner that you have. You are supposed to be a helpmate, one to encourage. Sisters who are wives to our brothers, please hold our brothers and husbands' hands up so that they may rise to any occasion with knowing that they have a very strong woman behind them. They say behind every successful man is a what? Nia song. It's no longer behind. It's now beside every right. woman is a woman. So <laughs> I, like, I, I, like, so I like this part of it. No longer behind, but beside. Because beside. No, longer, love love no longer behind us. They are standing by us and making sure that we move forward together. And that is That's very important. Yes. Now, Evelyn, I know that you mentioned some parts of Africa, but what about the black on black or the self-importance in enslavement. For example, the economy is bad, yes, but instead of trying to do something in your home country, you decide to go on that trek and then maybe that swimming across the Mediterranean. Unfortunately, they cannot swim across the Atlantic. Why do people have to impose these things on themselves? Why not bear with what obtains in your country and try to make use of the potatoes you have rather than going to seek for eggs where there are no eggs or where the eggs may be given you, but on uh, bad conditions? Uh, yeah, um, me, I think the problem we have with uh, the parents, most of those children, even their parents sponsor the trips and encourage them to go to Europe for greener pastures. Because many parents are ignorant. They believe that whatever the kids will do abroad will be better than what they'll be home. So I think what we need to do is to have organizations that can maybe part of what we have to do is to organize education awareness in the various countries in Africa. Because most of those kids are sponsored by their own parents. That is the problem. So we need to educate parents uh, who do not have sufficient knowledge on the, what the kids can do back home and also the, the danger of sending the children out there. But also political commitment is one. The governments must be committed again. It comes back to the government and most of those people who have the, the, who have the power, they, they are the men. It comes back to the men. 
the governments must be committed. If you have a, a committed leadership in Africa, if we need to be strong, if we have to be strong, like Ghana is now talking strongly, the president is talking strongly, we may be able to reduce this, this um, outflow of uh, children to Europe because they are really enslaved. I have a girl who just called me from last week from Turkey. She left Turkey, she's been pushed to Greece somewhere and now they've taken them to a camp. You know, it's terrible in that camp. She doesn't even know what to do, whether to come back out. She does not even know how to move, what to do next. You know, and I'm asking her, how did you get there? But the family supported her to go. So that is a problem. The lack of education, lack of knowledge, it's a problem that we have in Africa. Unfortunately. Hello, no, Hello? Yeah, Reverend, yes, uh, no, yeah, Reverend Solange, I understand she finally broke through the- yes, uh, Actually, somebody the, with um, a Yes, Reverend Pam, yeah. It, That's it, me, Reverend Pam, this is um, Dr. B. Okay, Dr. B, go ahead. That's Dr. Tazo. Dr. B. Tadzong, it's been a long time. You only come in when Reverend Pam and Sylvia are on. When I'm not on, you <laughs> We're always on. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm always on the road, so I try to, I, I do the best I can, and sometimes I'm able to log on on one format, but not on the other format. Okay. So I, you know, I was just listening, listening, on the, listening in on the conversation, and I just wanted to share a few things. Yes. Um, I read an article a few years ago, and we're talking about exploitation and, you know, what women have to do with this. The truth of the matter is that they did studies around the world, and they found out that women actually are part of the reason why there's a lot of oppression and exploitation, and it happens everywhere. Um, it happens in different ways. I always say human beings are the same. They just mask their problems in different ways. So, for example, in other parts of the world, women are the ones who help men oppress other women. In America, we've seen a lot of women calling the cops on innocent black men. This problem is true everywhere. It's the same everywhere. So we women need to start working on ourselves. We need to stop being the perpetrators of evil. We need to stop enabling and pushing the men to do what they're doing, hurting other people. Um, what we need to realize is that life is a cycle. What you start is going to come back to you. It's going to go full cycle. So when we are doing these things, as you're busy um, oppressing somebody else's family member, somebody's going to be busy oppressing your own family member somewhere. So the only way to stop it is to level the playing ground. Let's make it, I don't expect that there will be perfection in this life, but I do expect that we can all make a good effort to, to do right by other people. It's, never, it's not always going to be perfect. We're not always going to get it right. But a good, it starts with a good intention. It starts with putting effort, and we're going to start seeing changes. And then the other part that we talked about was um, why people are sending their children out of the country. The problem with the black person is that we've just lost it. We've lost our self-confidence. We've lost our self-respect. We've lost our dignity. Why would you be looking for somebody else to solve your internal problems? Nobody else comes to Africans to solve their problems. Nobody else asks for our opinion or our permission when they want to do what they want to do. Why are we the ones always doing this? Because we don't respect ourselves. Instead of us looking and saying, how do we solve our problems, we are always looking for other people. As long as you're begging from somebody, you will be their slave. You know, I was thinking about Ebola a few years ago. People were dying in Africa. The Africans were just sitting and waiting for the UN to help them out. I'm like, what in the world is going on? You guys, this is a problem that is afflicting you. Nobody has more vested interest in solving this problem than you guys. You need to put your feet on the ground. You need to start digging in, and you need to start looking for solutions to your problems. And then the other thing that is sad, we Africans are running away from Africa, and the people that know better are running towards Africa. Are we asking ourselves why Chinese are buying up all of, all of African land? They know what's in that land. They know what's in that continent. But we, the original owners, are running away. And then someday we're going to come and start screaming and saying they took everything from us. We need to stop running away. And part of that, again, is a commitment to, to good environment for growth and development. We need to get outside of ourselves and stop being so self-centered and so um, driven by greed and, and egoism and so on. That's what's killing us, you know. Why would somebody be in power? They're not doing anything and they want to remain in power. They don't care what they're doing to other people. Greed, self-centeredness, and stupidity. So the African has to learn to trust themselves and trust each other, just like the Indians. And, and respect and themselves, yes. But we Africans, we don't trust our next door friend or next door neighbor, not even our blood brothers. We do not trust our blood brothers because collaboration between us is very far-fetched. That is something that I think as you say, the education should continue and we should together seek ways and means of encouraging one another to accept each other as we are and work together rather than 
being scary or being afraid of the other person. Yes, uh, Reverend Solange, is she ready to talk now? Reverend Solange, you are muted. Yes, okay. Let me unmute it. Reverend Solange, can you hear her? She is muted, so please open up and then we can hear you. No, she's still muted. She's That's still fine. Muted. Can you? Is it possible for you to unmute her? Is, from it, your is it me you're talking to? No, Sister Mariama, you can speak if you want to. If you want to weigh no. in on the topic. I'm, I'm glad I'm here. Uh, Silva is a girlfriend of mine, a sister. We've been together for a very long time. Awesome. What you guys are doing is awesome. All I Thank can you. say is about time Africa rise. Yes. We're all over, all over the place, traveling, getting the plane. How about them coming and visiting us? We need to be together and be strong. So I wish us all luck. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very much. Reverend Pam? Yes, you know, um, this, 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 this topic and this thing about fathers, this thing about people even bringing relatives or uh, people from their compound from back home to America to come and babysit, and then they just enslave them. We've known of cases where they bring these young girls, they don't put them in school, and um, they, they, sometimes they become not just uh, victims of you know, uh, 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 child enslavement or child labor, sometimes they, they, are, they are also vic victims of sexual uh, abuse. They become sexual slaves. But actually, a few years ago, we had a, a big case, that was even before social media, where this girl, it was a neighbor that actually alerted Child Protective Services. So I want to encourage, if you, somebody brought you from the village to America to work, make sure you are earning income. If they're not paying you, make sure they educate you. That there's no free, there's nothing free in the diaspora. There's not, even on the, on the continent, even in back in Africa, people go to the village and take uh, uh, children from their compound to the city. They, 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 the parents are ignorantly uh, giving their blessings, thinking that, it is an opportunity, uh, it's an economic opportunity for them. But these girls, some people just keep this. When we were growing up, we always had two maids. <clears throat> and, could, and my dad made sure he trained all of them. They, they had the same rights uh, like us. They didn't go to the same schools like we did because we went to private Catholic schools. But my dad put them in technical vocational training so that they'll be able to take care of themselves. They ate the same food that we ate, slept in the same house that we slept in, even though we had a boys' quarters. As a matter of fact, my brothers preferred to stay in the boys' quarters because they had their freedom to go in and out wherever they wanted. So, but, but I'm saying that when you go take people, remember that they are human beings. They, they are somebody's daughter. They are somebody's son. Don't come and maltreat them. The fact that you see a lot of these African movies, how the so-called madams or ogres, they abuse their, their mates. Those things are not just movies. Those are reality. It's happening. So we need to stop that. We really, really need to stop it. For our fathers, I want to encourage you. Open up near so you know, I know you say we should trust each other. Trust has to be earned. I'm sorry. I don't trust people. You have to earn it. But we have to love each other because that's a commandment. We don't have a choice. But trust has to be earned. Because sometimes, I'll give you an example. I, I, I was trying to, to uh, support an African-owned business, a Black-owned business. I, I had some issues trying to open an account with them, and I sent them an email. A month ago, I have not gotten a response. And I was not going to keep my, my stuff on hold waiting for a, a, a Black person. You know, I'm not saying that everybody does that. I'm just giving you an example. We, we have to be confident. I'll give you a couple of examples. I'm saying this not to put our people down, but to wake our people up. So I had to go open an account with a white person because I needed a business. I could not just sit and be waiting, you know? And this other person was able to open my account in 24 hours. Something like crayfish. I'm going to tell you right now, I think I've said it before. I don't buy crayfish from the African store because I don't have time to spend and be, be selecting all the, 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 the nonsense in the crayfish. And I advise you don't buy crayfish that is blended because let me tell you, everybody's laughing at me. No, this is the truth. You, you, our bodies are the same, you, you need to be careful what you put in your body. I buy my crayfish from a Vietnamese store because it's clean. I don't have to spend time sorting it. You want me to buy your crayfish, clean it, and I will buy it. But our people need to wake up. Don't put out some standard products. I'm not talking about every product. We have some high quality products. I'm just selecting some examples. Because sometimes it gets frustrating trying to support our own people. 
Over to you, Niasson. Thank you very much. The other aspect of this and the lack of support or lack of faith is, is sometimes you give your trust to somebody and they betray it. For example, let's go to the to this aspect, especially in our higher institutions of learning, where as I was growing up and as I said before I moved to the United States, there was this phrase, sex for max, that is university students go to universities, they are boarding schools, yes, or they go and, and, and stay in dormitories, but they start doing their own businesses with themselves, not because they want to, but because some of the professors, some of the lecturers become hunters in their own backyards, shooting down their own chickens. Some of these professors tell students, uh, do this and I'll give you a pass mark. Then of course, in Cameroon, which I know most, or which I know best, there was the practice of orals at final exams. And girls in particular were victims because they come to these uh, oral exams and the lecturer looks at her and says, okay, I won 50-50. You give me 50, I give you 50. What they call pro, a quid pro quo, what was in the news uh, some years, <laughs> some months ago in this country. They want quid pro quo. So should this be encouraged? No. The BBC did a scam, I mean, a, a, a research in Ghana and in Nigeria, and some university lecturers were punished and fired from their jobs. So please, girls, your parents send you to college or to university to study, not to trade your bodies for max. Your intelligence is good enough. If you develop it, it will pay you the dividend. But if you decide to trade your body for max, then you come out and you go to get a job and you can't perform, of course, you'll be fired. So please, this is another aspect of enslavement where lecturers enslave the students and students, of course, enslave themselves by submitting themselves. I don't know, I may be a man talking against men, but then I grew up the way I grew up because I grew up as who I am and I learned to live my life the way I, I learned to live it. So please, whatever it is, enslavement is enslavement, whether it is the female enslaving the male or the male enslaving the male or the female, as Reverend Pam said, women, please trust your husbands, tr treat them nice, be fair to them, give them the fair share of what they deserve. Don't talk back to them just because you can talk 30 words before they say two. So over to, is it Sylvia or Evelyn, whoever wants to take. Uh, if Reverend Solange finally got it uh, with us, okay, she can come in. Yes, is she on? No, no, she's, she's, she's tied up. Mm -hmm. Reverend Solange, she's tied up, she'll come back. <laughs> okay. Hello? Hi. Yeah. Oh, hello? Just, uh, Somebody's saying hello. Uh, yeah, this is B again. Um, me, me, I was just listening to you, and I, I, I fully concur, but I also wish to say something, because it's also true. It, it kind of seeps into everything that you have said and what Reverend Pam said. Um, sometimes, and I'm not making any excuses for anybody, sometimes we're looking at situations, and uh, with people are in a position of weakness. When you're in a position of weakness, you really can negotiate a lot. It's either a win or lose for you. Whereas, you know, the person in a position of strength is the one who should be exercising a whole lot more character. They're in a leadership position. So um, when, we, when a child is brought here to work for somebody, that child is completely powerless. This person, they usually take your documents from you. They take a lot of other things from you. Um, they have full control of your, 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 your life at that point when you're here. And so it's difficult for that child to insist that they want first, and also they don't even know what their rights are. And even children that are privileged, how many of them even really know their rights, let alone a child who is, you know, at a really disadvantaged situation? So I think um, really the onus is on the people who have power and privilege to be mindful and to realize that life is weird. Today you may be up, tomorrow you may be down. And also the people that you're mistreating, you don't know what they're going to be tomorrow. Be nice to everybody. You have no idea who you're dealing with. You don't have any idea what people carry around, what kind of blessings and what kind of curses they carry around. And you really have to keep that in mind. Um, it's the same thing with those girls that go to university. I think they've kind of made it an expectation now. A lot of young girls go to university, they expect that they will have to give something to get something. And um, it's a shame because um, a lot of young females go to university and even males now and they go and get damaged there and they come out there damaged goods. But the reason is because of the pressure. So while the girls should be able to say no, 
it, it, I've had people who tell me this professor failed me over and over and over, and they swore to me that I will not make it out of this university if I didn't give them what they wanted. So a girl in that kind of situation, and without too many options of where she can go to school, what is she supposed to do? You know, I think that we should put that pressure on the people in position of power and privilege to stop doing those things. We need to put, in fact, to whom much is given, much more is expected. So if you're in a position of power and privilege, you should be held even more accountable, and the punishment that should be meted out to you should be even harder. I, I tend to agree with you on that one. Uh, regarding even, uh, like, uh, when we look at Africa, I believe even the USA may have all the, the same remnants as well, where even the politicians, when you're going to look for a job as a female, unless you submit to them in a certain way, then you're not going to get the job. Like Reverend Pam said earlier on, in other countries, you can have the same qualifications because I'm lighter skinned and the other one is darker skinned. I get the preferential treatment and the darker skin who has more qualifications than me gets a lower pay. Now, it seems like as Africans, we have accepted this as a norm. It is something that has been going on for eons of years. I remember my mother telling me about the same stories that uh, Ania Song just you know, talked about the students in schools. And I did see it in schools myself. So we need to start from the top because those students, like uh, Reverend Pam said, they're, in, I mean, not really innocent, but it's something that they have found themselves in and can get out of because they're victims. As a victim, you don't want to be chased out of school. You want your diploma, you want your degree, you want to, you want to succeed and you want to graduate. So you know that if I don't graduate, Dr. Ogoji, you're on. If I don't graduate, it's going to be a problem for me and my family. So what is the way forward for our children, our students, whether they be in high school, whether they be in college, that we can do as parents? Because when you send your child to school, a lot of them are scared to come and tell your mom, oh, this professor wants to sleep with me, otherwise I'll fail English, or that professor slept with me, that's why I got an A. Nia Song mentioned to say, you will graduate because you've been sleeping your way around, but you won't be able to perform in, you know, in, in your place of work or maybe at the higher institution. So what can we do as a people of color to stop this from happening? Because most of them will not admit it, but we know you, all of us on this uh, phone, I mean, this uh, forum know that this happens. What, what can we do to start, start working on this? In other words, to stop this from our side as Africans. Let me just weigh in a couple of things. Uh, well, now the social media, they don't have to sleep with these people. I want our people to know you don't have to. Record them. Go tell your parents that this is what this teacher wants. Go tell a neighbor. Tell somebody. Go to the principal and tell them that. Enough of that nonsense. It's been going on for decades. Enough of it. I personally never experienced it. Thank God. You know, however, you know, um, maybe they were afraid anyway, because they knew the private and my dad was going to put them in prison. But, but what, 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 not that I would have even con, uh, condoned it. And we as parents, we need to instill self-worth in our children. When you instill self-worth, you know, and I said, I said, your children, they will know that they don't need to do that. They will know they have other options. So education is key. This show is one of the things we are doing, raising awareness about issues that affect Africans and Africa seeking solutions to those issues and making progress. So we are encouraging all our listeners. You know, we have, we have more than 3,200, and Uzo was just telling me, IT lady was just telling me that every Sunday, more than 1,500 people are watching this, they are listening to this show. I did not realize that, you know. So we, this is a huge, very powerful platform. So please, everybody who is hearing this, share it. The videos are free. Share it. Inbox us. We'll do something about it. We have connections on the continent. If there is somebody abusing, you don't have, you have a choice. You do have a choice. So you don't have to take it. My dear, you don't have to take it. Plus don't forget there's diseases out there. So uh, we have done a show called sexually, uh, I mean, uh, 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 education, uh, education in our uh, uh, back home. We, we talked about this sexually transmitted grades. That was the first time I heard about it. That was three years ago we did that. <laughs> We're going to be talking about that again. So as you are getting the sexually transmitted grades, you'll be getting sexually trans transmitted diseases. And the shame is, is that these people who are doing this are probably married, probably carrying diseases. You know, HIV is not the only disease. Corona, uh, COVID-19 is not the only disease. But I want to give air time to Dr. Ogoji. Dr. Ogoji, happy Father's Day to you, our beloved uh, 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 brother. You, you, you have 
millions of children, not just the ones you gave birth to, but the ones that you have delivered. Over to you. We have six million deliver today. None today. Happy Father's Day. Dr. Ogoji. Thank you. Same to you. Audio is bad. Yeah, yeah, audio. Dr. Ogoji, can you hear? Can you move? I can hear you guys, yes. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Now we can hear you. We have five minutes at the top of the hour. So let's hear your take on the on this week's topic. Modern day enslavement of Africans and people of African descent and what the fathers, the roles and men uh, play to alleviate it. Well, um, um slavery has been a long standing um issue since mankind. Um, it, has, it was abolished legally in the states more than 2,000 years ago, but it's still actively uh, taking place in the world. The more yeah, oh dear. Your voice is breaking. You're breaking, Dr. Ogoji. Dr. Ogoji, we can't hear you. Do you want to hang uh, up and come back in? It's a network problem, I think. It's a network is it better now? Yeah. Your audio is bad. Yeah. We just lost him. Yeah. All right. We're getting close to the top of the hour. Uh, we have four minutes. Uh, Sister Evelyn, did you have anything to chime in? Yeah, just a very quick one. I wanted to add to what I speak to what uh, Reverend Pam and uh, the other lady talked about. You know, back we have elites like us, educated women and men, who bring children from communities into the city. And they say they're going to work with them in their homes for say three years. And usually they know these children will not stay up for three years. And between, let's say after one year, somewhere between these children decide to, to leave the homes and they go empty. So that's a lot of enslavement that's happening all. It's it happens a lot. We we you know, and it's educated people, you know, the enslave, especially the women who bring them, you know, they enslave them. In their homes and then you know for no pay and when the child has to go the complaint is this is not a time we agreed you are going early and i don't have sufficient money and this some of these children go empty-handed so that's enslaving we're still enslaving our own children in our own continent we need to stop it we need to speak it out speak loud and clear so that people can see we can stop it yes um that, that is a, a very true statement including our own uh, uh, biological brothers and sisters, when they take your child from you to try to raise him or her, they do make that she can't say. They make him or her do all the dirty chores, all the, the menial labor while the, your, your sibling, the owner of the house's son or daughters are just sitting there doing nothing. They get the least of the, the, the choice uh, pieces of uh, food or meat or whatever uh, snacks that they're given. The, the, uh, your sibling, sis, brother or sister, their children get whatever the top of uh, the line is, top soup as you may call it, while your child is being uh, left to sleep on the floor without a mattress, but just a mat to sleep on. Sometimes not even a mat, but they have to sleep on the floor with a little cover that it looks like a little rug that was picked from the trash can. This has got to stop. As Africans, we know better. As Africans, we are leaders. We were never born followers. We were born leaders and let's lead and let's show the world who we are and what we can do. And when it comes to our children, Let's self-preserve and self-protect those children. We are the only guardians they have. If we don't uh, guard and protect our children, who will? They're being killed like rats on the street. They're being put in jail, like uh, Reverend Pam said earlier on, by the same us women, uh, girlfriends, wives, and concubines, and uh, what, whatever, small mothers or whatever, small wives on the other side. We call the cops on them. Almost 60% of our men in, in, in America are in jails and prisons, not because of a major crime they committed, but because we, as women, call the police on them and they've been arrested because of our mouth. Come on now. We need to protect our men and self-preserve our men, especially those that are growing up. The future is of tomorrow. We are now above the age of about 50. We have a saying in which says, meaning you've reached the peak of uh, your life, now you're going down. You were first descending, now you were going downwards. Now, since we're going downwards, we're going to need a little bit of help, you know, going down that hill. Our children are our help. So those of us who are mistreating children or relatives' children or whoever, any human being, 
some of us treat our dogs and cats better than we do our own relatives, our own children, uh, brothers and sisters or cousins' children. We need to stop it. We have to love children like Pam, uh, Reverend said. We have to love one another. Trust is one issue, but we have to love one another. As we're coming to the top of the hour, let me have uh, Reverend Pam give us some updates and uh, some uh, information that uh, she has to share with us. Reverend Pam. Yeah, thank you so much, Sister Sylvia. Um, uh, Dr. Ogoji, I, I hope your, your, your sound is okay. Now, after the top of the hour, we'll give you uh, the airways to speak. But um, yeah, uh, this topic, you know, it, it is just, it's kind of uh, um, an upsetting topic. We might be, it sounded solemn because it really is, and it doesn't have to continue. Uh, but I want to encourage everybody, the Zoom, the Zoom ID to Zoom in is 514 one nine nine eight five four. So you can still join us. We still have thirty minutes to the show. Again, the Zoom ID is five one four four one nine nine eight five four pound to join the live uh, conversation. I know a lot of people are just watching on Facebook. Uh, starting um, Monday, we're going to be talking about the spike in COVID uh, nineteen cases and uh, uh, coronavirus uh, infections in the U.S. You know, uh, the, the states reopen kind of prematurely, and I think 23 or more states have seen, you know, so, uh, 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 high, a great spike. Uh, only God knows what's going to happen in, in Oklahoma after, this, uh, uh, after yesterday's event. So don't be foolish. Protect yourself and don't go near anybody who is not wearing a mask because your mask protects them. It doesn't protect you unless you're wearing an N95 mask. So we're going to be talking about that. Uh, I don't know if the, I think today's is Father's Day. Maybe Dr. Stella is tied up in church, but she's very passionate about this topic. And uh, Dr. B and uh, Dr. Ogoji and Dr. Stella and all our other medical scouts, we know you guys are going to be weighing in. We also have uh, a, a fundraiser coming up. That will be our first official fundraiser. I'm so excited. It's coming up in about 30 days, you know, or just a little bit uh, more than 30 days. And uh, all of us here, uh, you know, except for our, our guests, are part of that planning committee. I just uh, uh, pulled Evelyn to be part of it. And she, she, she already, she's an action person. She already contacted somebody who is going to be a potential co MC and help us fundraise. Uh, before I, I continue the announcement, Sister Sylvia, you want to tell us without necessarily mentioning the name of the other person? Yes, we have a sister from Ethiopia who's a, a former uh, model, dynamic, uh, I believe she did TV as well, or radio host uh, in Ethiopia. She is based out of Houston, uh, I mean, uh, Dallas, Texas. She's very excited about coming on board. I won't mention her name because she's also going to be one of, uh, she's bringing on, I think, a speaker, if I'm not mistaken. She mentioned the name, but I'm not going to share that either. Oh, I believe it's a powerful speaker. So uh, let's get uh, people to come and join us. We are open for suggestions. We are open for those of you who would like to be a part of this fundraiser. There's also going to be commercial advertising for those of you who want to commercially advertise on our day. This is your day. So come on, come on, let's do this together. It is for us. It is for all of us. Thank awesome. you. Very much. Awesome. And if you would like to be part of the planning committee, we just, look, everybody's a volunteer. But we need passionate volunteers. We don't need any space fillers. If you are passionate, we don't need more than 20 people. You know, so we already have, you know, a few people. Inbox us on Facebook and let us know why that you want to be part of it and why you want to be part of it, and also which country on Africa in Africa or uh, uh, or the diaspora you're from. This is our thing. It's for Africa, you know. Uh, it's for uh, all the 55 uh, uh, AU members <coughs> of Africa. It's not for any only one country, but it will be good for you to encourage your people to be part of it because if we get a lot of people from one area of Africa, we're not going to go put water in your country where your people did not participate, even though the computer is going to select it. So you need to be part of this. It's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. We're going to have, we're going to dance. We're going to party. We're going to raise money. We're going to have some amazing speakers. Again, you, it will be different from what you've watched out there. So um, that, that, that fundraising is coming uh, next. Actually, uh, the first show in July, I will I, I announce the date. But for now, just know it's uh, uh, just a little bit uh, 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 above 30 days that we're going to be doing that. So we, we, we are going to have uh, uh, a planning call on this Thursday. So uh, uh, Evie, you might not be able to join that planning call because of the time zone, the difference. So we may have to have a call at a time when 
those of you in Africa can participate, but we will, we will speak, uh, Sister Sylvia, myself, Reverend Solan, the board members, Dr. Ogoji, we will discuss it and see a, a day where we can set up a planning meeting to accommodate our brothers and sisters on the continent, because you guys need to be part of it. And um, again, I want to talk about the book, Africa's uh, Brain Power. You know, that book is on- uh, uh, Pam, you, you went through too fast. You have not explained to our audience what we are fundraising for. You just like skid through it. Okay, you go ahead. <laughs> I thought you were gonna do it. You are the um, so, go ahead. All right. the, the, fun, the, fun, the reason we're doing a fundraiser is that there's been a realization that uh, there's still a lot of uh, remote places in Africa that do not get running water into their areas of a boat. Uh, our young girls, five, six, seven years old, still have to walk to the rivers, three, four, five, six miles one way, three, four, five, six miles back the other way. Sometimes they successfully come back. Other times they're bitten by snakes. Other times they're raped. Other times they're kidnapped. A lot of horrible things happen along the way. So we're going to uh, start now targeting certain uh, um, areas of improvement, meaning uh, the computer, let's say uh, we put in your names, like the Reverend Pam said. Let's say we have five countries that have put their names in, uh, two from the southern part, two central and two west. You don't expect us to come and put a borehole in, in, uh, in East Africa, do you? Because nobody from East Africa participated to assist in this. So there's, Africa has five regions. We have North, East, South, West, and Central Africa. So we expect representation from all five of these uh, uh, regions so that when the boy is put into the bucket for the computer now to choose which country or countries uh, with an IES, depending on how much money we raise, then we will announce to say, okay, we are going to Kenya. We're going to put two boreholes in uh, village A and C. Then we'll be going to Mozambique. We're going to put uh, D and C. Then we're going to Cameroon and we're going to put a borehole in A. Now, you see, that's called equal participation. So if you guys want us to also come to your countries, please bring as many people as you can. The more diverse we are on this organization team and fundraising, the better it will be for our continent. This is for Mother Africa. It's not for Reverend Pam, for me, or for uh, uh, Nea Swamp. No, it's for all of us. Thanks, Reverend. Awesome. And we're going to also have ads. So what I would suggest, uh, 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 Madam President, on our next call, we're going to do like a, a video uh, ad, uh, advertisement for this event. I'm putting yeah. out there so people can can uh, save the date. You know, we're not going to, they just need to know that it's on this date. We're going to put out a flyer, but do a video also inviting people and letting them know to invite their friends to come. All those businesses that are out there, if you want to advertise, you're going to be exposed to hundreds of thousands of people that are going to be watching this on YouTube, Facebook, live, and it will be reruns. So um, we, want, we want you to inbox us or also send an email to info at africaonlinetv.org. Info at africaonlinetv.org. So we will get you a quote. But it's going to be a spectacular event. It's going to be a must attend event. It's going to be a virtual event. And you'll be giving back. It's time for corporate social responsibility. So, uh, Nia Song, uh, Dr. Ogoji, the airways are yours to weigh in on this, uh, this week's topic. Oh, I mentioned the, the Africa's Brain Power book. I already did, Nia Song. So I, thought I, should share it. I thought I should share it. Oh, please do. Yes, it's a compilation of the editorials and it's a powerful. Today's even Father's Day. It's yeah. like for Father's Day, Mother's Day, Thanksgiving, 4th of July, every day, just because beautiful. And I had the pleasure and the, the privilege of doing the, the forward to the book and editing the whole book. So get it, you know, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a must read. Dr. There, are entries, there are two entries there for 2016 and 2017 on Father's Day, Mother's Day, and all the rest of it. So please, this is something you can share or you can take to the beach or I don't know, I don't do some of those things. But you can read, uh, you can give as a gift to your dad as a Father's Day gift. Why not? Thank you. Uh, Dr. Ogoji, are you able to unmute? Dr. Ogoji? Not really. Okay, Nia, so go ahead when he comes okay. back. On. Let's continue now with our topic enslavement and what role uh, fathers have played in making it happen or not happen. I know when I watched uh, Roots. The saga of an African family that, that story from uh, that started from uh, the Gambia and ended in America. The story of the African uh, enslavement of the African and uh, whatever. I, I, I watched because that was back in the 70s. I think I watched it. It was it premiered when I was in Canada, and uh, I realized that 
the whites come in and they, let me use the word bribe, they bribe our people and they go hunting for their own brothers and sisters or relatives from the bushes because they've gone to the farm. Like Kunta Kinte went to look for a piece of wood to make a drum for his little sister. And he got caught, even though he fought back very uh, bravely. Unfortunately, one against three or five people, could not, he could not succeed. So why are we enabling these people to do it? I know we've uh, tried to answer that question. There are no jobs in our countries, yes. But should we trust that going to say this country or that country in the Middle East or in Asia, we're going to get a better deal? No, it has happened that some of our brothers and sisters have been sold as slaves. You are running from freedom into slavery. Our girls have been used as sex toys, sex or uh, sex uh, whatever sex mates in these countries. They get to the countries they're going to, and as somebody said, their passports are taken. They said, you came here to work and you have to work. And they work 12, 16 hours a day, no rest. So what are we doing? Are we enabling it or are we, because we fear our own government, we fear to protest our own government, should we let loose our children into the world to go and suffer just because they want that piece of bread on the table? So that is the question all of us should continue discussing as we move on with this program. Evelyn, I see you are anxious to say something. Go ahead, then we'll go to Sylvia and to yeah. uh, whoever else is there. Yeah, so to me, I think we need to continue with education. We talk about it, we don't see it on TV, we don't see it in the media. With some people here as a gossip, let's bring it to the table. Let's make it public so that people can see it. Many parents have heard as a gossip, you know, it's not public. You know, we need to handle it differently. In countries like um, Kenya, I think the, the, the governments talked about it. Even in Singapore, in other countries, they talk about some of these things. And in fin, um, Philippines as well, the government talked about it. But in most of our countries in Africa, it's not public. You know, people just see as gossip. A girl has come back, or oh, she's suffering. Or things have happened. You know, some of them come even mad because they were deprived of food, everything, lost oxygen. Their brain just went off, and they really returned home, really sick. I was flying from. Uh, somewhere once transit in uh, Ghana, a girl arrived really off head. She was mad at the airport. I want to ask the security, I said, she's from Dubai. She's from Dubai. You know, many are coming, it's not public. I think we need to encourage that there should be programs in the media, on papers, on radio, on TV, to talk about this thing, to show them so that people can really believe. Many don't really believe because they don't say it. Yes, Sylvia? Dr. Ogoji is back. Oh, okay. Dr. Ogoji, are you with us now? Sylvia is muted. Dr. Ogoji, can you hear? Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay. <laughs> I was saying Dr. Ogoji is back. I know I've seen him uh, come in. Okay. Yeah. Dr. Ogoji, go ahead. Yes, yours now. All right. I'll stop talking as soon as I hear, uh, I hear him chime in. Dr. Ogoji, we can't hear you. Oh, no. Is it having very bad reception today? Yes. It's the weather because there are thunderstorms. Oh, all that is true. Yes, you're right. You're right. All right. Uh, let me just say one or two things. And uh, if, he can't, if he comes online, I'll definitely you know, drop off so that he can uh, continue the conversation. Uh, yes, education is, is uh, one of the biggest things that um, a lot of us, like um, uh, Sister Evelyn just said, that uh, we all have to encourage. But you see, most of these media platforms are also censored. It depends in which country you are or on what platform you're using that you can be able to reach the masses. If we're looking at most of these uh, videos or, 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 or whatever information that comes out, especially from the Middle East, it's very, very much censored unless it's smuggled out or you know, brought out. So there needs to be a more organized way for how our children or our girls, even boys, I believe, are also taken in the same way. Uh, Dr. Goji, I see you. Oh, it says you left. Never mind. Uh, right. This is not only for girls, by the way. Even boys are also taken in the same manner and are abused in the same manner, believe it or not. Yep. So when we talk, let's talk about uh, both both sexes in, in, a, in an equal uh, you know, manner where both boys and girls are included, I mean, inclusive of, because 
once we start this education process, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take years. Look how many years it took for it to be to where it was. So we don't expect this to turn overnight. There's going to be some resistance. There's going to be some backlash to us and not so many nice thoughts said to us. But if we stand as a people, let's figure out a platform or a way to put this out there so that it's easily available and accessible to our people that need our help or the people that are out there that are being put in positions that are uncomfortable or positions that they don't want to be in. Slavery is when, like uh, Sister Evelyn says, you're forced to be or to do things that are not pleasant to you. Yeah, yeah, song? Real quick, I think, uh, yeah. Yeah, so I think Dr. Goji, can you hear hey, us? Can you hear me now? Can you guys hear yeah. me? Yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah. So my own take on modern day slavery has to do with uh, the leaders to make our environment very hostile for us to live. If our leaders in Africa were doing fine, most of us would not be here. When we come here, we are willing to swallow all sorts of rubbish because we want to feed our family. This was this for those of us who were successful enough to cross over and find our footing. Majority of our brothers and sisters die on Europe. That is slavery, even though they are living voluntarily from Nigeria. From Ghana to Libya to see, they all die in the highway. This is slavery. And what I call this slavery, I don't want to blame our leaders. I want to blame the, the white man in particular because um, I keep on saying this if I turn around and buy a house in this case, cash for $200,000, two, two days, every eye is coming to my house. Where did, where did you get that money from? I will explain. But they let African leaders to come and buy one billion houses, dollar houses in this country, deposit millions of dollars in this country because they want Africa to make, to make poor and to make beggars. So as they are punishing their own citizens for stealing their money, they encourage our, citizens, our own leaders to steal money and come and make their economy great. So part of thing, the person who buys it should be blamed. Those who benefit from the corrupt African leaders are this Western world, and that leads to what human drain, brain drain, economic drain, and lack of um, economic might or lack of idea. I mean, we cannot compete with developed war because of this. That's my take. Thank you, Dr. Ogoji. I'm talking about corrupt governments. I just got from the BBC, the Zimbabwean authorities say people who cannot explain where their wealth came from are in danger of having their assets seized, even if court cleared them of a corruption allegation. It is what is going awesome. on even yesterday. Beautiful. Awesome. Yeah, one of them, Beautiful. Good job. Uh, one, of, one of the assistants to the president was in court yesterday. He was tried yesterday and uh, he was given bail, but he will go back to court to testify to the way he got the money. Actually, his case is different because he tried to use the COVID-19 money for other purposes, $50 million. So that was uh, that one at stake. So Zimbabwe is getting hot about it. They want to be sure that people justify where they got the money from to buy those luxurious apartments abroad or those uh, cars that they buy. And so things are happening in Africa as we speak. Reverend Palmer. Yeah. Well, happy Father's Day yeah. to the president of Zimbabwe. Happy Father's Day to everybody that did that. Let's hope that on this Father's Day, all those presidents, most of whom are men. Reverend Pam, include the president of Congo DRC. Uh, there's also breaking news out of Congo DRC. Yes. Okay, yes. Sh sh share, share the breaking news, then I will continue with what I wanted to say. All right. The breaking news is the chief of staff for uh, uh, President Chitsekedi. His name is Harry. He has been arrested also and uh, jailed yeah. for 20 years for embezzlement of funds, I think, the tune of 180 million with an M. So him and I think uh, the other guy that was working with him, both of them have been given 20 years because the president said he's cleaning out corruption, he's cleaning out house, and so it's happening. Zimbabwe is happening. DRC is happening. 
I hope other countries take note as well and start doing the same thing. Reverend Pam? Thank you for that breaking news. Happy Father's Day to the president of the DRC and everybody that was in that task force. I hope it's not the same thing where in Cameroon they will arrest you, but the money is still in your bank account. And then, <laughs> uh, then, then they allow you to go home and a medical leave every week or so, and then they, they, they pardon you and go back and pay you. Uh, nonsense. That's not arrest. So let's just, just let's applaud these ones that are doing this, and we are inviting any of those, whether it's the, the president of Zimbabwe or DRC or anybody who is fighting corruption, will bring you on this show so everybody knows because you, 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 our leaders have broken our hearts for long. In in, in our uh, in my message during the Africa Online uh, Africa's Brain Bank launch, I I I, I played them with the head of state. I said, "We're not asking you for money. Just open the gates so we can come back home and." Help you take care of our people. That's all we're asking. Open the gates. Like Reverend our chaplain said, we're not asking for anything. Just take your, your knee off our necks. So uh, mm -hmm. for our parents, for, I wrote this before our chaplain said what he said, though, but I'm just saying open the gates so we can come back home. I want to encourage everybody. We have been doing this show for four years. It's just the last two years that we've been doing a video version of it. So Africa Online has been raising awareness about these issues. We've been talking about it on the air. And, and it is not falling on deaf ears. But uh, 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 we are at, 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 a, at a time when, as far as we're raising this money, we're going to start doing things. And uh, Africa's Brain by our sister organization executes our projects for us. And uh, the, for those uh, 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 young people, don't be disenfranchised. Help is coming. We are, as you all know, our, our vision is to put an end to Africa's brain drain by creating this repository, the Brain Bank of Africa's Intellectual Capital, Intellectual Property, and Brain Power. That's all, all that is on our website. We launched that thing. So we are going to be empowering these this local people. And, and even the village, we're actually starting with the villages. The centers that we are building are going to be in the villages, not in the cities. So all those children that the future ones, the ones that are being born today, that somebody from the city is going to come take them to go be a houseboy, as good, that's not going to happen. Because they're going to be trained in the village there. That's where we are starting. So I just want to encourage everybody that hope is not lost. Reverend Solange, are you able to speak? Reverend Solange, over to you, Niasso. Yes, I was uh, scrolling through my phone to see what some people said during the week. And uh, this one, I didn't get the name, but it says, indeed, it is very necessary if we can. We need to stick together in good and bad times. Them white folk only see a black man. There's no difference noted between Africans and African-Americans by them. So the more we are in numbers, the better. Let's show our concern and support. That was some- no, no, so, Sorry, uh, uh, that was me. Mention, Sister Sylvia, our website is gonna be up this week. Uh, the website was being updated. So all these, our people will have access to it where if they have internet. I'm just saying that in addition to the Facebook, that's one resource where they'll be able to go to get some of this information that we are putting out because information is power. The people that are going to be successful during this time are people that have the information. So, Inyasong, go ahead. I wanted to give that quick update. Yeah, thank you very much. Now, continuing from my phone, from what I got from people who have participated in our post posting during the week, my response is an appeal to African men in positions of authority. That's one of the contributors who contributed on our, work, on our uh, uh, wall, on our forum. As it is commonly said, quote, if left untreated, hurt people go on hurting other people. This is how the cycle of violence has been perpetrated on Africans by Africans and Africans to sustain the simple practice of slavery in Africa. In Africa, slavery is not only a problem of the heart, it is endorsed through our institutions. Institutions play a major role in affirming the dignity of all human life. African men hold most positions of authority in our traditional civil and religious institutions. The African man practices slavery regularly, knowingly or unknowingly, willingly or unwillingly through the exercise of power and authority. Due to the magnitude of power entrusted to African men, we rightfully or erroneously assume that they should be a major force in influencing practices to end or abolish slavery. Sadly, most African men seem to be stuck in a mental prison of powerlessness. Consequently, they embody dual roles of perpetrators and victims of slavery. 
wittingly or unwittingly, they represent symbols of modern day slavery as perpetrators and targets. African men wield a, a tremendous, wield a tremendous amount of power in our traditional civil and religious societies. I believe they can use their authority to lead and move our society towards equity and justice for all of mankind. We'll not be able to read the whole thing, but just to let the conversation go, again, as we've already said on this program, the finger points more at the men because it is more of a man's society than a woman's society. The women are not allowed to talk in public. The men talk and take the decisions. The men are the king, the men are the, uh, the, 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 the power wielders. So what should we do if power means using it to suppress your own people? Should we continue to let men be the power wielders? Women, please speak up. No, we shouldn't let the men continue to rule because look how they've messed up the continent. Most of these countries that we have, the 55 African countries in Africa, I total mess, they total shambles because men with your egos, we don't do the right thing. Look at this corruption that we're talking about in Africa. If Africa was not so corrupt, it would be a first world country with all the minerals. The 65% of the minerals are, um, are in Africa. So why are these other countries out here so rich and yet the, 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 the continent that holds the wealth is the poorest and is in the doldrums? Men, I think, should need to start now thinking about stepping aside and letting uh, these power women, powerful women, start taking charge. Because uh, I think Reverend Pam may, may, made an adage earlier on that I can't remember about uh, uh, educating a woman or something like that. I can't remember exactly what she said. Educate a woman and you educate a village. You, she's nation. correct. A nation. Come, come again? A, a nation. A nation, thank you. Yes, that's what you said. Yes, I'm sorry. She said, educate a woman and you uh, educate a nation. Yeah, uh, men, we are talking to you as women, strong, powerful African women. We yeah. need you to start stepping aside and make way for us. Yeah. We need to start being at that steering wheel, take control of our countries because you guys have rubbed our, our continent into the mud. Yeah. We are wallowing in that mud like pigs because you guys don't know how to direct or control the situation. Let's start from the grassroots. Let's start cleaning up. Let's build the Africa that we want. Yes, you know, uh, it's all right. Uh, actually, we have less than three minutes. Uh, I, I, uh, I think we should. Uh, uh, so you want everybody to take it around, Doctor Ogo? Do you want to give us your last word? I'll go last. So we have less than three minutes. One minute, please. Okay. Doctor Ogo, please. We'll start with you. Yeah, I will say that um, I want to call on our poly on our religious leaders, the pastors, the priests, the church. This the church has a big influence in Africa. Yes. Stop talking about miracle. Miracles exist, but talk about social justice. Mm -hmm. Social justice. Go and claim your country back from these leaders. They don't. They, they don't own the country. We the people own the continent, not the leaders. So spread social justice like Martin Luther King Jr. did. He changed America from the pulpit. He didn't talk about miracle, miracle, miracle. He said, go out there and free slaves. So please. Start social justice and campaign and religious leaders. Thank you. Evelyn, your last word for today. No, I think uh, my last word is to just speak to the last last speaker. I think it's in line because um, we have lots of religious leaders who are very prominent. They need to change their language. I think that's one of the directions we need to take. Okay. Is it Reverend Pam or Sylvia? I agree with Dr. Ogoji. Yes, the religious, religious leaders need to take a more proactive action, uh, uh, platform and action too, for sure, and change their verbiage. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Pam. Uh, yes, uh, um, Mariama, did you want to say something? Oh, I don't even see her. No, she's not. She's not in view. Yeah, you know, in addition to the religious leaders, the community leaders, the local government leaders, they, 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 they have a they have a platform. You know, we need to use that platform to educate our people. So I will, I will urge all leaders, whether uh, uh, religious leaders, forget the political leaders, the religious leaders, community leaders, you know, uh, um, tribal leaders, you know, the chiefs and the the Igwe's and whatever they call them. Kings. Yeah, kings, use, use your, your platform to educate our people and instill self-pride, self-esteem, self-confidence in them. Me as well. 
Thank you very much. Thank you all for the participation today. We are most grateful to everyone that Zoomed in today, watched silently out there, or was able to contribute. Whatever we do, please, we are changing minds, we are raising awareness, and we are making sure that African issues are discussed by us Africans, because if we don't, somebody else will do it in their own way, not in our way, because we know our continent better, we know our people better, and let us work together for a better Africa. Thank you all so much. And we will be seeing from tonight because we'll be posting uh, information, start deleting your, uh, the, the information in your boxes so that we can have space to post our next topic on Monday morning. Or we will see. Happy Father's Day once more to Dr. Brody and all our brothers. Bye bye, guys. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. bye.